Okay, right. Um, this video is going to teach you two, three things actually. Um, we're going to teach you about Ohm's law, and we're going to teach you how to calculate the resistor for an LED, which uses Ohm's law. And it's also going to teach you, without realising it, um, how to connect up a voltmeter and an ammeter, uh, which is something you're going to need to know. Uh, quite, quite easy stuff. All right, Ohm's law. Um, really really simply invented by a bloke called with the surname Ohm, Charles Ohm I think it was great electronics um, pioneer he basically worked out that the voltage in any circuit is always without exception all the time equal to the current flowing times the total resistance in a circuit and he wrote that down as V equals I times R now V stands for voltage R stands for resistance, that's all pretty straightforward. Um, I, they used to stand for current because C was already taken for Coulomb, which is another electrical measurement I don't want to bore you with now. So just remember I is current, that's the sticking one. Now, if you're like me, you probably suck at maths, in which case I didn't get algebra at school. Um, and the only way I could understand it was with formula triangles. I had real trouble rearranging them. So I like to remember it in this triangle here. Um, the reason you need to remember the formula and know how to manipulate it is you might have to rearrange it okay so for instance in one circuit you might know the voltage and know the resistance but not know the current okay and you'd need to know how to rearrange it to find the current so to use a triangle you should know this it's pretty straightforward um, whichever one you want to find out you cover up and the num the what's left behind in the triangle is what your equation should look like. So if I wanted to find out the volts, I would cover it up. So imagine it's not there. So volts would be equal to I times R. If I wanted to find out resistance, I would cover resistance up as best I can with an else. And I'd be left with V divided by I. So R is equal to V divided by I. If I wanted to find out I, then I'd cover that up and it would be V divided by R. Okay, so just be remem remember there's three ways you can arrange that equation to find whichever value of either current resistance or volts that you want. Um, remember, you get this in the exam paper, so you don't need to freak out too much about remembering it. Just remember what they're measured in. Um, so resistance is measured in ohms with that funny little omega symbol. Volts is measured in volts with V for the symbol. And amps is the measurement of current and A is the symbol for that. Okay, You may sometimes also see resistance written as just R. Both of them mean ohms. Right, so that was Ohm's law. Um, I'm going to put it into practice and prove it to you and show you using Circuit Wizard now. Okay, So just ignore what we've got here for a second. Um, right, I'm going to make a really, really simple circuit, the most simple circuit I can make. I've got a battery here, which is 9 volts, and I've got a resistor. Um, I'm going to make that a 10k resistor. Okay, just ignore that a second. I deliberately put a mystery resistor in. Um, so imagine you've got all right a 1k resistor here, and I'm going to join the other resistor, other end of the resistor, back to negative. So I've got a circuit. Okay, forms a complete loop. That's a circuit. Now that doesn't do anything. Um, at most, it might be a heater because the resistance of the resistor would and the, against the current flowing through it would cause a bit of heat but in reality that would do nothing apart from flatten the battery without doing anything but it's useful for proving Ohm's law okay and what I want to do is to show you that all of these things add up okay so I know the volts I know the resistance um, I need to work out the current that's flowing okay now I can work out what it should be and then with an ammeter, a current measuring device, I'm going to prove that it's correct. So I've got 9 volts, I've got the resistance and I need to find I. So if I go back here to my, or go to my formula triangle, I, if I cover it up, is volts divided by resistance. So that would be 9 volts divided by 1k. Remember that k stands for 1000, so it's actually 9 divided by 1000. Plug that into a calculator. Okay, and I should get 0 0.009 amps. Right, um, that would actually be written as 9 milliamps. Okay, 
milli means um, divide by a thousand or okay, it, it, but it will come up on the meter as nine milliamps, which is a thousand for the nine thousand for the amps. Anyway, um, I'm going to plug the ammeter in now, and to learn about ammeters, how to connect them up, they always go in series, which means they have to be in the electricity or the flow of electricity to measure. Um, think of if you think of electricity like water, as we do quite a bit, if you wanted to measure how much water was flowing through a river, you wouldn't stand outside the river and guess. You would actually stand in the river and have something to measure how much is flowing past a point. It's the same if you're measuring electricity or current specifically. You need to be in the flow. Anyway, I'll shut up and press play, and we get 9 milliamps, exactly as we calculated. Okay, I times that by 1,000 to get rid of to turn it into milli. I get nine. All right, uh, we can prove it again. Let's just turn that off. I'm going to make that a 10k resistor now. So that's now 10,000. So my formula would be nine divided by 10,000. Okay. I get 0 0.009. Okay. Um, which again is going to be. Uh, let me just check. I did that right. 10. 0.009, sorry, I missed a zero. Um, so that should be 0.9 millivolts if I press play. Okay, or it's actually gone for 900 microamps, which means the same thing. But anyway, you get the point. You can prove that I is equal to V over R and vice versa. Right, um, just to show you how it changes, if we, for instance, swap the resistor for a variable one, one that we can change. This would be one that you just turn a dial and the amount of resistance available changes. Um, you should see my current change as I alter resistance. You'll notice as resistance gets bigger, less and less current flows, which makes sense. Right? You put more resistance in the way of the electricity, less is going to flow. If you put less resistance, more is going to flow. Okay. Now, in electronics, we sometimes need to limit the amount of current that's flowing for several reasons. One of them might be to protect components from too much. So for instance an LED, um, if I turn on explosions and I just hook my LED straight up to a battery, the LED will just take as much current as the battery can supply and boom it blows up. Now we would put a resistor in front of there to restrict the amount of current flowing. Um, but for your exam, you need to know how to calculate that resistor value. So, if I go back to my PowerPoint now, this is how you do it. It's using Ohm's law again, um, but you just have to take account of one simple thing. And I've written here, always take away the voltage drop across the LED from the battery voltage before doing the calculation. Normally, it's 2 volts. That means most LEDs actually use about 2 volts of electricity or 2 lots of potential when they're operating and you can take that off your calculation. It wouldn't matter if you left it on in practice, you just end up with a bigger resistor than you needed, um, but you would get the question wrong if it was an exam. So if we look at the circuit below, we've got 9 volt battery, we've got a resistor that we need to figure out how big it should be, and we've got a diode, a light emitting diode, LED. Now I've written in the question, the LED draws 30 milliamps of current and has a voltage drop of 2 volts across it, what would be a suitable resistor? So, Ohm's law is that volts equals current times resistance. I want to find out resistance, so I've rearranged it to be R is equal to V divided by I. I know the voltage of the battery is 9, and I know that I lose 2 volts across the LED, so 9 minus 2 is 7 volts and that's what I've written in there, 9 minus 2 in brackets, and divide by my current, which was 30 milliamps. Now you've also got to take account of the milli. Milli means times 10 to the minus 3, or divide by 1,000. So this would actually be 7 divided by 0.03. Plug that into a calculator, and you will get 233 ohms as the recommended resistor. Now if you think about all the electronics you've done so far, we always use about a 330 ohm resistor to protect our LEDs, which is in the right same ballpark as what we've got here. Um, we'll do the same math for the circuit we've got. We'll put a 233 ohm resistor in, 
because it's the same circuit in Circuit Wizard and hopefully that should stop it blowing up. If it doesn't, I'm going to look a bit stupid. Right, so I'm going to take that, I'm going to make it 230 near enough ohms. Okay, connect it up. I really hope this works. There we go. Our LED is now getting enough current to light it, as bright as it can go, but not too much. And it didn't blow up. Okay, that is um, Ohm's Law. We'll just, and how to work out the resistor for an LED. Um, if you change the voltage, it would obviously make a difference. If I upped the voltage in my circuit to 18 volts, we'll probably find, because there's more push now, that resistor isn't man enough to protect the LED. Okay, and both of them are blown up just to prove a point there. So, if you ever go and buy LEDs from Macklin for a project, you know how to calculate them. Okay, know what I'm doing in the background. Right, um, one thing I didn't show you, I showed you how to connect up an ammeter um, to measure current, which is this, and you always connect that in series. And I'm also going to show you how to connect up a voltmeter. Now, we can We can also prove that we lose voltage across an LED here. Okay, um, at the moment, sorry, bear with me. I need to put my resistor back in. Um, it is half nine at night, by the way. Right now, it shows how much dedication I have. Bear that in mind when you're sitting here laughing at my tutorials. Um, there we go. Two thirty ohms. So there's my protective resistor. I'm measuring my current, and I want to know how much volts is going across my LED. Now, to do a voltmeter, they are different to an LED. They look similar, but with a V in the middle, if you ever see the symbol. But you connect the voltmeters in parallel, which means you need to kind of piggyback them. So I don't put it in line like that. I put it around the component I'm measuring the voltage across. So if I put one end on that end of the LED, and that end on that side, that is now in parallel. Imagine train tracks running through it, they're apart from each other but in line, that's what parallel means. If I press play now, I will notice that I have actually got 9 volts going in and I'm only measuring 4.26 volts across the LED. If I measure between a different point, if I measure between here and here, okay, I get the full 9 volts. Right, so what I'm proving is my resistor has not only changed my voltage, it's changed my current, and that's what's protecting my LED. Okay, but you've now learned three things. Ohm's law, um, how to calculate the resistor that you want to put in front of an LED, which is a, a real favourite question in the exam paper, and then how to wire up a voltmeter and an ammeter to measure current and volts. Okay. I hope that was as much fun to listen to as it was to record. <laughs>